Hey everyone and welcome to the next edition of the Snapchat. I'm joined today by none other than Cozy Snap. Cozy, it has been a fun week in Marvel Snap with the release of Deadpool's Diner. I mean, was, was wait, wait, is that a fun week? I'm not sure. Depending on who you ask, it's been a good week in Marvel Snap. Got at least some rewards in the Deadpool's Diner for sure. We talked about that on your side of the Snapchat here, but a, a card did come out. Fenris Wolf, Cozy. And I gotta tell you, Fenris Wolf is an interesting one. I came in a little hotter than you. You came in at about three, three and a half. But you know what? Even then, I felt like, you know when we're in those situations where like you're really high on a car and I'm low and I feel like you drag me up a bit and then you were low on a card and I feel like I drag you up a little bit. I felt like that's what I did to you a little bit you last did, week. for sure. I was at two and a half or two, I think, on the season reveal. And then I was like, man, yeah. the more I get up. And then I, and then I played it and yeah, I won't spoil it. But yes. Tans, yeah, that, that happens, right? We get into conversation with each other and like if one of us is higher, we sell each other on it too. I feel like you often sell me better than I can sell you though. I think it's the salesman in you, buddy. But last time I got you with Fenris and I scammed you, bud. I think I scammed you on that one there because uh, Fenris has, well, I'm going to be honest with you, it's underperformed my expectations, but I do not think it's a bad card. That's what I'm going to like start this conversation with, but I'll give it to you, Cozy. Yeah, no, it's funny. I felt like I was signed to a pyramid scheme and he, you're like, I got him. And I, I signed and then I'm like, where's my BMW? No, listen, I wholeheartedly agree. This is such a weird card to evaluate. He is not a great card, but he's not a bad card either. It's such a weird mix. And I actually enjoy him and I enjoy his play style. I think, um, to be honest, the it's the first time I've enjoyed Mill in a long time with the way that this guy plays it's super cool and like looking at what you've gotten rid of i enjoy way more the random destruction and discard than i do targeted stuff like and i never thought that would be the case but i enjoy the mill decks where i'm like what is gladiator pull like gladiator is my favorite combination with them um it, rather than like the shang chi and like doing all that stuff i almost didn't care about that at all i love doing the uh the random stuff or the moon knight that felt good, and I think he will age well as we continue. We literally said exactly that. We discussed it even with, with Gore Pryor. The idea of, like, you got these moon shots that everyone focused on. Oh, you Shang-Chi this, and you bring him back. And I've had those wins. I mean, we, I had him in my, my kind of review video where, like, literally, I shang chi to flip a lane, won that lane, Fenris the other one. It was beautiful. That is, like, the top end. But that's not generally what was happening. What was happening was exactly what you described. Gladiator kills a fort like a Hope Summers or whatever, right? I bring it back early so I can play into Hope Summers, right? Because I have the activate, so I know I killed Hope. I'm going to bring Hope back. I'm going to play into that location. And I, I do really like the idea of even Yondu. Like, I Yondu'd a, uh, an Iceman. And I'm like, okay, I might actually bring the Iceman back now to disrupt their hand a little bit. You know, I, I liked that about Fenris Wolf. And so, like... It was good in a way that like the the two three stat line could it have been two four yeah but then again like you're reaching pretty high if it's two four I feel like it's too much from a stats perspective I felt like it was putting out good power like the things you were destroying with Gladiator it was like often a two nine two eleven like it was putting up good stats you know what I mean it's just the condition felt awkward to meet sometimes to me too it just felt like it's the classic like but does it make a deck better right so Malekith great example I think he made a deck better whereas. Fenris yeah, Wolf did. outside of Mill, I think he, I think Fenris, I would argue that the Wolf plays really good into Mill, and I felt like that deck just did better across the board for me. Every other deck is like what discard, okay, or, or like is it going to take a two slot for the Shang Chi for the flex build? No, so that's where it didn't feel good, and that's where it's so hard to evaluate these cards, and that's where it's like card acquisition is just so awkward because if it wasn't, it'd be like, oh yeah, this one's you know, it's this easy to get a card. This is one that I'd probably get, you know, it's probably going to do better down the line. Um, but yeah, because of Gore coming out, because of um, the next season, you know, it's Monday. It's not too late to get the wolf. I would say don't get him. Yeah, yeah I lean towards that as well. And it's unfortunate because I, I do like the card and like some of the best performing decks that it runs have like those like stature black bolt style synergies where like you play the Moon Knight and you might high roll a hit on their side for a six drop. And for you, it's like Proxima comes down for free right? Um, there's a lot of value that this card can generate, but it's funny because I, I had this thought with Fenris, it really showcases how much power creep we've had at the two slot because like Jeff used to be a remarkable two costed card. It used to be the staple two costed card. And then white widow took over for the longest time. And Fenris Wolf is a two, three, which traditionally has been the premium stat line, right? Think about what premium stats used to be, right? Two, three uh, is premium for the two costs. Three, five would be premium for the threes, right? 
410 is usually premium for fours. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, like Alex, there's tons of tons of cars that reach those power. Like Surter, uh, Surter itself blows past like those four drop numbers, right? And so Fenris Wolf, you bring back something small. It's still like a two seven, right? But yeah. apparently that's not enough. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of crazy to think that that power creep has hit that hard at this two slot. But also, it's like yeah, because he comes out as balanced essentially. Like I was, as you yeah. talked about at the beginning. It's like when I was evaluating his star ratings, I was like stability i was like i don't know i don't think they changed anything what are they going to change i you know i, I think that they're going to keep it relatively the same the way that it activate, the, activates the way that it works we're going to get more cars that destroy so i think that that's its upside eventually we're going to get more cars that can discard that's going to be its upside as well and so that's where like this but we we've seen what we we know the next two seasons so like minimum february march april away from this card being super relevant and that's why it's an easy pass yeah, I, I can absolutely see that because we did mention in our preview of the rival season that there's so many cards there that you're going to want to get and the spotlight caches are weak. So I'm going to echo exactly what Cozy's saying here. Fenris Wolf is running a 49.9% win rate um, and a popularity that's boosted by the fact that it's on the weekend missions routes at 21%, but that's again, a little inflated, but a 49.9% win rate. Malkith was like almost 3% higher than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people were low on Malekith and saving on like, well, yeah, actually, again, your Malekith deck was one of the absolute best performing ones in the discard shell. And this Fenris, it just doesn't feel like it's going to have that much of an impact. However, what's going to happen is they're going to release a targeted, oh, discard the highest power cost card, the highest power card in your opponent's hand or whatever. And then now Fenris is the best card in the game or destroy gets a new piece and Fenris becomes the release valve for it. And so, like, I totally understand the FOMO side of, like, why a card like this might have a very niche um, ability that you might be interested in. But overall, I'm going to agree, especially considering how valuable tokens are going to be going into this upcoming season where, like, the Marvel Rivals characters look incredible. He also just keeps forever Hella in check, and I think that was a little bit of their goal. I can see that. I can see that. And Hella has kind of fallen off as it is. Like, for instance, it will not make our top 10 decks. There's no way Hella's in your top 10 list, right? Oh, shoot. Did we do top 10 decks or cards? I may have messed up. I said cards. I, I meant cards. I said decks. Okay, I was like, well, my notes are gone. Uh, yes, <laughs> Hella. Nope, nope. She's not in there. All right, so overall with Fenris, we're going to give it a pass. Um, star rating, what would you give it? I'm I'm going to stick it... I'm going to stick a three, four range. I still think it's good. I just don't think it's... No, it's not a four. It's probably a three, isn't it? It's yeah. definitely a three for uh, me. Yeah, maybe two and a half for me. Go for two and a half? I can see that, yeah. Four was too high. I feel like three is probably where it is. At some point, we got to figure out like what these numbers mean. I saw a comment on that. Someone's like, five means Cozy thinks it's broken. Four means it's just good. Three means it's playable. And everything under that is just card is garbage. Do not get it. Pretty much. Yeah, we don't give cards at ones a lot. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, you gave King Eatry a 1.5 and Cozy literally said it ruined his entire weekend to give you an idea of how that went. All right, Cozy, Fenris Wolf. It's a skip from the boys on the snapchat and that's going to take us to the best cards in marvel snap and cozy and i we have a top 10 list which we we've each done one and this is one of those kind of like segments where i get really nervous cozy because like i'm looking at my list and i'm like yeah i like this list and then as soon as we start talking i'm gonna be like no my list sucks no, I hate <laughs> you this know list. what i mean yeah, yeah yeah it's so funny how things work sometimes now as is tradition let's get started with some of the honorable mentions cozy i'll let you begin yeah, so I try to look at uh, standalone value in this list. You know, can't talk I about. Agree. Yeah, you just can't talk about. Uh, you know, uh, like for instance, spoiler alert, but like discard is very hard to talk about because it's like, well, who's yeah. the winner, right? So I almost wanted to put Apoc because on a grand scale, he's kind of the winner. But it's like, well, Apoc isn't anything without these cards. So like it, that, it's tough to talk about some cards. So like I left Apoc out. Uh, so on that note, uh, it, it's crazy I even had to leave these out. Like these are just tough to talk about. First I had is Scream being out, uh, but I do think that there is a argument that she is one of the better cards in the game right now. I think that a card where you draw and you get her, you get a win, then she's up there. I and mean, look at the decks, look at the cards, she's that good, uh, but I do not have her in my top 10. She is an HM for me. Wow, I cannot believe we're starting like this because this card is definitely in my top 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, yeah, I can't give her that single-handed value, but she's great. Like She's really good. Uh, like yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel that, man. Like the best decks, then yeah, but yeah, it's not that. 
Yeah, I know, but but she carries those best. Like she carries yeah. that entire archetype. Without Scream, that archetype is dead. It doesn't even exist. You don't yeah. play Polaris without Scream. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it defines the. Arch I'm already defending my placement because it's not even like it's you know, not even pretty low. It's pretty high, cozy. Oh, so we're gonna whoa, have to cope okay, in a few right. minutes here. First out, dude. First out. So it's not like she's bad. Like eleven out of three thousand cards or whatever there's in this game is not bad. <laughs> three thousand cards. Yeah, you know, it's not a bad spot. I'm just gonna give her a top ten. I think you left out some ones that just need to be in there that they're not fun to put in there but they need they, they they need to be in there but i'm gonna be curious. I, I feel that what's your what's that. your honorable okay. mention i got three but uh or two more but i want to know you all right uh, i got three honorable mentions too i'm gonna go thena i didn't put thena on the list and i love thena a lot yep and um i feel like still she's a great card i think the meta has evolved past thena and i think that uh there's a, a number of different reasons for that but i still think this card's good it's going to come back. It's going to have a T-Day. Anytime Kitty Pride becomes relevant, Thena's going to become relevant. It's just not that moment right now. We're talking about the best cards in Snap right now, and Thena does not make that list. Uh, yeah, it's Another one I just want to mention here is Jeff. Jeff doesn't make my top 10, dude, and it makes me sad. Um, For mine, I have, um, and this one was crazy to leave out. I just tried to think about it. And again, this is first out in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I've got Mockingbird right out, right out. Uh, Definitely deserves to be very close but not quite and then this was the card that i like literally took out it was the last card i took out and i was like uh you know there's this card and one other one that i went back and forth i'm like which one deserves to be out which one is standalone value and again i'm not looking at the decks i think it's so easy to look at that dark hawk is first uh out as well it's his deck that's good it's not him and i get it it's the way that you play him but, da, da, da. but he he does not carry that for me so i have dark hawk first out as well it's funny you say that because Darkhawk in my list, because I have like 20 listed, he's like 19. Like he fell pretty far for me. And oh. so I would agree that Darkhawk wouldn't make a top 10, which is crazy because he used to be easy top 10. I, I think when we did this like um, last year at some point, he was literally one or two. Yeah. Right. He was a four drop and stuff like that. It was very different. So it's hard to remember those days, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, Darkhawk has fallen off completely. And the last honorable mention I want to give is uh, to Sarah. I think Sarah's incredible. And it continues to be a great card. And it's even making a comeback. Like, it's legit not just Surf for Copium, but, like, it is legit being played in these control style decks. Um, because of the prevalence of bounce, you're seeing these Sarah control decks that are running the Invisible Woman, the Killmonger. You know, you have the agent, uh, US agent in there as well. Uh, it's a great card, but it does not crack the top 10 for me, which is a little unfortunate. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, I mentioned APOC. That's kind of in there, too. Uh, let's get started. Top 10 list. What you got at number 10? I'm like so confused right now because like I'm staring at my top 10 and I made a last minute change for my 11 and I'm not sure if I want to do it anymore. So I'm like actually scared, but let's just go with it. Okay. Top 10. And I'm going to mention this alongside. Okay. Top 10. I'm switching out Iron Man to 11 because I had Iron Man there. I'm going to switch out Iron Man to 11. I don't love this. And I'm going to put Gilgamesh at 10. Because I had Gilgamesh out at 11, and I'm like, no, I don't think I like that. I think Gilgamesh has to be in there. So I'm just going to admit that Iron Man was originally 10. He's going to move down to 11, and I'm going to put Gilgamesh in at number 10. So this is funny because we can get two things done. Okay. Uh, my 10 is Iron Man, and my 9 is Gilgamesh. So let's go ahead and <laughs> no talk way. about it. Yeah, not even kidding <laughs> you. So uh, Iron Man could be higher. I think uh, Iron Man is a standalone incredible card. He could be... He's like the winner, man. He does so much, dude. That card's so freaking good. Let's just face it, period, full stop. So I do have Iron Man right there. And then Gilgamesh, same thing, dude. Okay, we're not in like the most zoo meta. This card is stupid for a five. It's so dumb. It's so good. Absolutely deserves to be in there. So Gilgamesh uh, uh, carrying the, the weight for an archetype. Gore is about to be in this list, and he's going to work with that. So definitely like those picks. What's your nine, then? My nine... Um, this is a hot, I don't know, this shouldn't be a hot take. It shouldn't be a hot take. But similar to Gilgamesh, there's another 5 drop that puts up a tremendous amount of power. And we compare them very often for their respective archetypes. And that's Ajax. I think it's about time we give Ajax a little bit of respect. It took some time for us to get there. And the metas had to shift. And I think that a big part of that was also like, uh, you know, some supporting cards got buffed too, right? But Ajax has proven to be a very legitimate card. It's proven to be a meta contender, and it's also proven to put these toxic style decks onto the map to the point where, like, on any given week, you might have one in the top 10 of the meta, right? 
Sometimes they're mid performing, sometimes they're near the top. But these toxic style hazmat Ajax decks, which were my favorite with uh, with uh, Malekith, by the way. Honestly, Ajax carries the load here. I think he's worth a nine spot. Uh, yeah, I mean, the more steel cards we get, we're getting even more. So he's going to continue to get good. I think there's that rocket group card that's going to make him better. Um, to me, I, I have him out. I, I don't have him as like the the, the staple in there. For me, it's uh, this is where I have Cassandra Nova, which is uh, obviously uh, uh, an engine to that. Cassandra is <laughs> what six power most of the time. You're also stealing that, so it's more than that. You're fueling Ajax. You're hard countering Arisham. Like single package. God, I love that card. It's so it's so. I did this stupid Asgard deck with King Ichi, not to bring him up again, but I took out Cassandra to put in Frigga because I wanted more Asgardians. And I'm like, dude, I have to have... Her. Like, if you're playing Deadpool's Diner, put Cassandra in the deck because of how many people play Arisham as a, you know, a safety gate. Uh, so, so yeah, we both went with a negative power and flick kind of feel. That's where, we, uh, that's where I got Cassandra. I thought about Cassandra Nova, and I ultimately kept her off this list, and I wasn't happy about it. She's, uh, she's right above Sarah which is kind of crazy to me. Like, I think she's probably better than Sarah is right now and for the reasons you mentioned. So I, I absolutely agree there. Uh, coming in at number eight, Cozy, I'll start us off here. And I think that eight is where I ultimately put Surtur. Now, I think that Surtur could be higher, but I want to pay the respect to the cards that have proven themselves over a long period of time. Um, I do think, though, that like this month has showcased that Surtur's power output is truly remarkably high. Um, and it's actually elevated cards like Crossbones, Typhoid Mary, and others that you would see nowhere else. And I think that that's a huge thing to consider. One card, one card brought out all these other cards and elevated, similar to what I would argue for uh, Scream. This card is so good on its, on its own that cards that you would never have played otherwise get lifted alongside it. You know what I mean? So I'd like to give some respect to Surtur at number eight. I mean, just like Agent Venom, and uh, I don't think him or Surtur need any uh, longevity to be proven their greatness. So I got them higher, so I will refrain. Uh, I already said my 8-7, though. I could kick us off with. 7 for me. This Cassandra's my 8, keep in mind. Yoga Bash Iron Man, right? My 7? This one was tricky because, again, looking at what we've got, looking at the different options, um, I'm going to go with Eliath here. Again, I'm not the biggest Eliath. should be the top card in the game. Uh, and it, it's all kind of probably by like user experience. Like I don't lose to a life too much. Either I predict it or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's good. He definitely wipes away a lot of the finishers, a lot of combos. We're in a meta where there is a good amount of those. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got him right here around number seven. I love that. Cozy's like, you know, Goliath's not that much of a problem for me because I'm not a dog shit player. You know, I see him coming. So, you nah, know, I not just at all. Not at all. Come on now. <laughs> don't, don't throw me under the bus like that. But what I will say, though, is I agree he deserves to be on the top 10, but I disagree that he's 7. I think he's higher, Cozy. I, I have a life higher here, bud. I'm not shocked at all. I, like, 100% knew you had a life higher. And so I'm well, not. because last week we were talking about tech cards, and I put him so high, and you're like, bro, he's not even a tech card. And I'm like, Eliath is a tech card, sir. Yeah. Actually, I don't think many people even chimed in on that, because Cozy and I were, were kind of split on that. Like, do you consider Eliath a tech card? Mm, no. S yes. yes. See? <laughs> I, I just... don't know. Yes, no. Yes, no. Kind of both. Uh... Okay, so that was set. Who's your seven? My seven. Oh, yeah, I haven't even said seven yet. Uh, my seven is Nico. Um, I, I put Nico here because uh, it's so funny. I love this card so much, and I know you do too. But, like, when I'm playing Nico, I often find myself, like, thinking I could cut her. This is how I know she's good. I thought, like, oh, you know what? I'll cut Nico. Let's put something else in that's a little more consistent, is what I tell myself. I play the deck, and I'm like, bro. If I just put Nico in, this deck's better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every single time. And so Nico's been a card that like I find myself trying to cut and I find myself being wrong very often. I'll come back to Nico. I will come back to, to Nico there. That, what, was that seven you said? That was seven for me. Okay, next up uh, is number six. And uh, I felt like this was kind of low for the card, but it can't be left off. This was one I'm curious, curious if you left it off because I feel like you can't. You can't. Shadow King. Period point blank. Boom, that's uh, where I have him too. We did it. You got him. Nice. Got it. He's got to be on there. He's got to be on there. Shadow King is an answer. Shadow King is cheap. Shadow King's great. Uh, he's reliable. He's the new Shung in a lot of ways. Uh, so yeah, Shadow King. I don't even need to say much about him. And the fact that Luke Cage is like, there's that difference now is kind of cool too. Yeah, Shadow King's incredible, honestly. And like the thing about it that I really like is that it's fe it feels like it has like an application across so many different decks. Like, yeah, you don't want to play it on turn two naturally. But 
it disrupts, uh, destroy, it disrupts zoo. It disrupts pretty much everything, right? Um, you can actually, I mean, in some degrees, you can kind of uh, counteract the uh, the plays of like something like a Cassandra Nova, which is the reason why it makes the um, the decks in Erisham, for instance, right? So yeah, Shadow King is an absolute baller. I'm glad we agreed on number six. And I, I also like the fact you're like, you must have left this guy off, Alex. You might, and boom, I'm glad. exact same spot you I'm did. I'm glad you have one there, dude. Uh, what do we have? Uh, what you got for five? So we're going into our top five. Just as a reminder here, just so people don't lose track, I had Gilgamesh at 10, Iron Man at 11. I did that last minute switch. Ajax at nine, Surtur at eight, Nico at seven, and then Shadow King at six. Cozy, what was your uh, first five? Iron Man, Gilgamesh, uh, Eliath, um, Shadow King, right? Oh, and Cassandra Nova was two behind did, that. Did you do that in order? I think you confused everyone. Yeah, I messed it up. They're keeping track. What you got? What you got? In the all right, all right. Well, I was trying to help you kind of keep track mentally of where our top 10 was, and Cozy just literally butchered that idea. Thank you for that. Uh, coming in at number five for me, this is where I have Scream. I did put Scream at five. Um, and I know that's high. You're like, bro, seriously. I, but yeah, like, think high. about it, man. Like, it elevates that entire archetype, and it has been crushing for so long. We've been gushing over Scream. Like, I, I just think the card's great, and um, it is so remarkably well. It's like, it's it carries. It just carries. But over it Nico, makes bad cards over good. Shadow King and Nico, that's crazy. That's 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 copium. That's uh, it's good. It's a great I'm card. I'm known for it's huffing. So freaking good. I just could never put it above. The cards that are going to catch all, right? I, I can't just be a yes man. I got I to gotta stay in my ground. So I do feel like Scream, if it were to make my list, would have been just lower. And it's not to say she's not fantastic. It's just the one dimensionality behind her is where I can't. She's so strong. Just didn't want to look at the deck stats to her. But you think, so you stand behind Shadow King Nico worse than this. Okay. First of all, how dare you? Secondly, I like that you're like digging your high heels in here. I like that you're digging in. You're like, no, Alex, I'm gonna challenge. I don't want to offend you. I'm just saying my, just saying my thing. <laughs> I, I just think that like, Nick, okay, Nico's great. I, I, I love Nico. I love Shadow King, but Shadow King didn't make an an entire archetype. It didn't yeah, raise like cards from the dead. He made them all. Like there are cards that saw zero play until Scream came out. It yeah. brought the entire archetype up like a phoenix from the ashes. Like, I'm just saying that, like, this whole deck would not exist. Our entire meta would not have this style of play if it wasn't for Scream. And that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, okay. Is Phoenix Force on your list, too? Yeah. No, I love Phoenix Force, too. It's, like, my favorite right now. Okay. Didn't make it. Uh, So, that was five, right? Uh, Did we both that's say five? five yeah. Did you? Did I say my five? I don't think I did. I don't know. You said a whole bunch of random stuff when I asked when you. Once you so. asked to go through the order, that was where everything was lost. Uh, No. Uh, For me, number five I have here... Surtur. Uh, so Surtur is not far from uh, where you put him, but the guy just wins a lane by himself. So like, how do I, how do I not say that? Right? Like he could be left alone on a lane. He has like that Drac feel to him, but he's a three cost. There's so many cards that synergize with him. There's meta cards that synergize with him. There's cards that could come out that do. I think this isn't even the end of what might happen to him later on in an OTA. It is a little criminal that to spoil it, but Agent Venom and Surtur are both on this list in some regard. And they're the last two season pass cards. Yeah. Way to spoil my four, bro. Because that's Agent Venom. You're right. right. And the reason why I like Surtur at some to some degree, I was like, I think I mentioned it where I said I wanted to pay some respect to cards that have legitimately proven themselves over time. Yeah. Like obviously Surtur's cracked, but like Nico and Shadow King and even Scream has been showcasing its abilities for a long time. And Scream plays with absolute garbage tier cards. Like Surtur. It, it kind of goes together with like just super high power cards you want to play anyways. Yeah, right. Flexibility is just good. Yeah. So four for me is Agent Venom, even with the you, you can call it a nerf, but I mean it's a two five. <laughs> it's a two five. Can you believe that this card is a two five right now? Like I am shocked that it's a two five. But yeah, number four for me, Agent Venom. The card is absolutely cracked. I've now entered that point that we always enter in tier lists. We're like, I'm like, what card does he not have on there? What card do I what not have What did I forget? There? Well, it's kind of both. It's like, who left something off? But it, it could be one of us. Could be neither. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so number four for me. Uh, yeah, funny enough, I had Age of Venom as well. So Age of Venom for me, you know, a little bit narrow in some cases. But for the most part, he just elevates uh, a ton of cards. Works in uh, way more decks than you'd give him credit for. Premium, premium stat line. He's stupid. <laughs> he's good. Yeah, he's he's so, he's so stupid good. And uh, it's funny because I'm looking at my top three and I'm like, man, someone made a mistake. I, I It could be me, man. Usually it's me. Remember that one year I left Thanos off and he was literally crushing the meta? I, I, you could. You could. There's two that have to be here. My three you've already mentioned. So we'll There's see. There's two that have to be here as well. 
Like, I, so yeah, we must. Okay, I'm missing one from your list. It looks like because can I go my three top three? We're in top three now. Yep, go. Number three is where I have the big purple stinky cloud, Eliath. Okay. All right. You want me to go right down to the two one? Yeah, yeah. So three is Eliath, two Shan Chi, and number one I gave to Erisham, considering how resilient this card has been. So we do wait. So hold on. I guess we we all then okay. We had the same thing because I like, but I had Nico at three, so like we flopped a life and Nico. Oh, so okay. Nico, look at the one drops. Look at what she does. Best one drop in the game has been, always will be, has to be there at three. Two Shang Chi, one Airsham. Yeah, same thing. So, so yeah, we agree. Airsham. Okay. Holy crap! Look okay, Airsham number one. Shang Chi two, and then I had a Lyatha three. You had Nico three. Yep. Okay, wow. dude, we were actually pretty spot on with each other. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that was actually. That's a first in a while too for being going at it blind. I'm I'm proud of us, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just don't think you can waver from that. That the top two at the very minimum, and, and then top three to five. They're, at least they're somewhat in the same realm. Uh, we had Shadow King, Surtur, Nico, kind of all mixed in there. Dude, you made me so nervous. You made me think I like I was too. forgetting the most like popular like, card in Snap. Like I like just yeah. completely off base. Like, gotcha. oh my gosh, man. I got a little worried too. But uh yeah, man, we were we were spot on there. And uh I mean there's not much to say about Chung. We've talked about him like every episode five weeks in a row. I refuse to do it again. Uh but uh Arisham, um it, you're just you're just a leg up on your opponent. And if they don't have Cassandra, it, you're just you're in a tough spot. I know. Arisham absolutely crushes. It's it's such an unfair advantage. It's to the point where like it almost made me sad that they buffed Thanos and immediately it was thrown into Arisham and it became one of the top decks in the game. I was like, come know, on, man. I like you, like does it have to be like that? I like you, you can play Thanos on turn four because you have an extra energy and you play the time stone out or whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, like, what just are gonna we probably even make it even anymore? better at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Actually Gore with Thanos, man. All those all those stones out there. Yep. It's not bad. But anyways, let's do it just one last time, Cozy, in order to recap your top 10. Start at number one. Uh, number one is Arisham. And my number one was also Arisham. Number two my, was Shang-Chi. Yep, Shang-Chi for me. Then I had Nico at three. I had Eliath at three. Uh, at four, I had uh, Surtur. I had Agent Venom at four. And oh, at Agent five, Venom. I had yeah, Scream. Yeah, Sorry, mix those yeah, up. we yeah, both had. Yeah, what are you? You're messing it up again. You're screwing up the order. Know, this is bad. the reason why we're doing this. I, Scream at five. You'd love to recap over here. You'd love to recap. Uh, yeah. Uh, so search at five for me. Then we had Shadow King both, correct? Yeah, Shadow King at six, and then we had. Uh, I'll finish it off to, for the sake of time. We had Nico, Surter, Ajax, Gilgamesh. Yep. Uh, then uh, I had Eliath, Cassandra Nova, Gilgamesh, Iron Man. Beautiful and cozy. You know what that means? It's mailbag time, baby. You ready for the, the Marvel Snap mailbag? Let's <laughs> Marvel do it. Snap. Snap. I tried to say pack. our podcast name and I got confused there. The Snapchat mailbag. The Marvel Snapchat mailbag. For a while in our in our titles, I used to put the Marvel Snapchat because it's Marvel Snap and also the Snapchat. So the snap in the middle, it did double duty, you know. I thought it was an SEO thing. Try to that, that it never mattered, anyways. But cozy. Let's get into the first question here. We got a lot of fun stuff. And the first one comes from Brian, just Brian. It reads mailbag question. Can we as a community start calling ongoing decks that use Sauron non-going decks? I mean, it's right there. Thanks, guys. Keep up the awesome work. Yep, absolutely. The four people that play that deck, absolutely. Let's do it. Non-going. <laughs> non-going it is. I just want to throw it out there because I thought that was really funny. And like if we it. could if we could impact the uh the verbiage that's being used in the zeitgeist of our Marvel Snap community, then let's let's actually do that there. Uh, it's now officially known as non-going decks if you're using Zero or Sauron. Our next question comes from uh, XC Warrior. I want you guys to discuss the Collector's Vault, which appears to be randomly coming up every few days. Now, XQ, XC Warrior thinks that it's poorly implemented. So, Cozy, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on the Collector's Vault thus far. I click them to do the thing. And then I leave. I have not even remotely messed with it. I think it's, yeah. I think it's just, like, I'm glad they spend time on it, I guess. I I don't like it. <laughs> it's whatever to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was like, at first, I was kind of against it. I was like, you know what? First of all, I want everyone to get access to whatever they want. Who cares? Like, I don't want to gatekeep people because of card art. Like, I don't care, right? But at the same time, I was like, you know, but they did sell them with the exclusivity idea. So whales might be a little pissed. I was trying to, like, talk both sides, right? But now that it's out, I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I skipped these cards for a reason. I just don't care. You know what I mean? 
And then the only one I was going to buy was the Rogue uh, Hero variant, which I was so upset I didn't have, even though I have absolutely fire Rogue variants. And I just forgot to buy it. Now it's gone. So it obviously didn't mean that much to me. But yeah, Collector's Vault overall for me, it's like there's so many missed variants that like it's I, I think I don't like the fact that it leans into the FOMO side a little bit. But I don't think if you're a whale, like it's really not the thing like it's it's yeah. it only comes every once in a while. It's random cards. Half of them suck. And they're still too damn expensive anyways. I think what I finally settled on is like what I wish they would have done because, yeah, I don't care enough to hold people back from more. But I do wish remember like that first edition thing they were going to do forever ago that obviously was first away. edition badge yeah yeah but they were going to reward that for people that got stuff with uh the collector tokens i think i don't even remember like what they were going to do with that but that, i think that's what it was right or with the variants i wish there would have been like a border or something that if you would have got those board those those uh bundles when you got them then they got they just looked a little bit different like or they even had the emblem at the top like collector's vault edition or what whatever just to give something to the people that bought it beforehand uh because I just think that's, you know, the right thing to do. But uh, I don't care enough. So it's uh, it's a mute point. It's, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. And our next question, there's actually a couple. There's been a lot of comments about this on the Snapchat. It comes from Voltron Pilot. And it actually reads, Dear Alex Kocha, I hope this comment finds you well. What the hell are you talking about? Tim Hortons is trash. How dare you attack such a time-honored franchise? <laughs> Not only is it a place of is it a piece of hockey history, Tim Horton being a hockey player, but it's also a treasured favor here in Michigan, as well as many other northern states. Much like the Ambassador Bridge or the soon-to-be-completed Gordie Howe International Bridge, Timmy's, as it's affectionately known, unites people from two different nations over a shared love of hockey, coffee, and donuts. I thought your friendship with Cozy would have taught you the value of such border-defying sense of community. It seems that an, even an educator himself still has lessons to learn. And that was followed up by Love Marley who said, Alex, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know a single Canadian who would disagree with you on that. Tim Hortons is terrible and completely soulless. I'm going to start I'm going to start picking the Snapchat quote. If I hear about Tim Hortons one more time, I I can't do it, Alex. I'm done with it. I'm going to find some American brand you have no idea about and bring it up on every episode. I'm done. I'm done with Tim Hortons. All right, Alex. I'm done. I don't know Tim Hortons. All right. I have nothing to add to this, uh, but that's that's all I have. I don't want to hear about I hate Tim Hortons. I hate you. I hate you. Boom. Look at that. Even Cozy hates Tim Hortons. He's never even had it yet. What an absolute god gamer. As Clyde Frog comes in with a quick question for us. Alex, are your kids still using your car like an Etch-A-Sketch? <laughs> I was your parents, so yes, right? They actually have, but it's okay. It's so funny because we talked about, first of all, I had to actually buy a minivan that hasn't been delivered yet because Cozy, although he's offered me, I've won so many vehicles from Cozy you at this have. point and they've not, they've never been delivered. In case you're wondering, they've never been delivered. And so uh, I had to go get a minivan and I will tell you, they did do the walk around to like assess the trade-in value and they did note the Etch-A-Sketch etch quality of my paint job thanks to my kids. So thanks for... Uh, for devaluing my trade-in guys. I, I really appreciated that. And the last question of the day comes in and it's a question for Cozy. And it reads, Cozy, have you ever played Persona 5 Royal? If not, you should. I'm not an RPG guy, but this one's awesome. I bring this up because like, I hear about Persona all the time. I have no idea what it is or what it's about. I'm speechless. I'm just speechless. Uh, we're two years into the Snapchat. There's one song that plays on every episode of the Snapchat. Every episode. That's Persona? I didn't know yeah, that. That's from Persona. Like, of course I've played Persona. Of course. I've played most of them. I can't even believe I'm getting asked. Yes. Music's amazing. Gameplay's amazing. Fantastic series. Uh, one of those that, like, if there was another COVID, I would just go and replay through all of them. Like, I love, love Persona. Uh, but yes. Absolutely. Okay. If someone knows nothing about Persona asking for a friend, what would be the one that they play? Great music, great. Oh, uh, five's a good start. Yep, five's fine. I mean, I like three, but five's good. Persona Five Royals, the one I should yep. play. Yes. Are you sure? Yep. Can I use this music? If you play, you get the the uh, the badge of honor. I get the badge of honor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cozy. I appreciate that badge of honor. And you know what? You guys get a badge of honor too for making it to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on that next one.